Good afternoon people, this is Isabel from Cowdenbeath Library and I just want to say welcome to my kitchen. Um, today I'm hopefully going to teach you how to make some foolproof scones. This is going to take a wee while but I hope you'll bear with me. The kids love making these, they love the dough at the end which they can play with for hours. So here we go, we'll get started. This is 8 ounces of self-raising flour with a pinch of salt. Now it's already been sift, sifted, sorry, and I'm just going to put that straight in the bowl. Now to that 8 ounces of self-raising flour, I'm going to add 2 ounces of butter. This is actual butter I've got here, it's not um, margarine though, you can use margarine, it's just I've got butter. Don't use the low fat margarine though or the spreadable one, it's not the same, okay? So just pop your butter in. Now if you see, it's already chopped up, it does help slightly. Um, it doesn't take so long to blend in. Now when you're blending your butter and your flour, don't take it and squeeze it. Take it by the edge of your fingers and rub it, okay? This helps it mix better. And you're letting the air in as well rather than squeezing the air out. So you're actually blending it with your fingers rather than with the whole hand. Helps keep it cool as well. Cooler your fingers are the better for pastry and things like that. Anyway, we're squeezing it through our fingers just at the end. And we're going to do this until the bread of the mixture resembles breadcrumbs. It does take a wee while but it's worth it in the end. You don't want big lumps of butter through your scones. So just keep going until it's all mixed in. And you're lifting it up just to incorporate the air and keeping it going. If you're not sure if you've got all the lumps out, you pretty well much have. But there is a way of telling whether you've got them all out. If you give the bowl a shake, all your heavy lumps will appear at the top of your flour. Okay? So that's what you're not wanting. You're wanting it as much like breadcrumbs as you can get it. Once we have all this butter mixed in, the next thing we're going to add is one ounce of caster sugar. Okay, it's only a tiny wee drop, it's just enough to sweeten up the mixture. Also at this stage, if you wanted fruit, so currants, raisins, sultanas, whatever you wanted, this is when you would um, add it. Okay, but I'm just making plain scones today. So, I am about to add it in. Just turn that round, make sure I've got everything in. There we go, that's all mixed in. It's all nice and crumbly now. And I'm going to add in one ounce of caster sugar. Again, this has been sifted already. And I'm just mixing it through, pulling up the mixture just to make sure it's all in. Okay. Now, the next thing is a quarter of a pint of milk. Now, it doesn't matter whether this is skimmed milk, semi-skimmed milk, full fat milk. A lot of people would just say full fat, but I never have full fat milk in this house, so it's semi-skimmed I've got here. Now, when I say quarter of a pint, I don't mean just dump the whole lot in. What you have to do is add the milk a little at a time. So I'm making a wee well in the middle of my pastry, oh, my dough rather. Can I see it? Because every time I tip the bowl, it fills in. So I'm making a well in the middle, and this is my milk. Okay, so I'm going to add a wee bit at a time. Now, you could stick your fingers straight in there and start mixing, but that's a bit messy. And since you've washed your hands already, you know what, you have to wash them till right at the end. So I'm using a spoon to start with. Okay, at some point we will have to get our hands in there and get them messy, but not at the moment, okay? Now, if you can see it starting to come together more like a dough. Now, I've still got quite a bit of milk left, but I don't need that much milk in the bowl. So I'm only going to put a little in because it's no good if it's too wet and soggy. Okay. 
just give it another stiff. It's really coming together now. Can you see the difference? There are some bits that are not incorporated yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the mixture off the spoon, get my fingers in that bowl and mix it around. Now, I'm getting the tiniest wee bit of milk yet, but not all this that's left, just a tiny wee bit just to bring it together. One more mix and that should be it. Now, I have one blob of dough. Here it is. Okay. Still looks quite crumbled here. I just want to bring this dough together very, very gently. I'm not kneading it. That's not what I want to do because I don't want to press the ear out. Okay. I just want to bring it together. Okay. So see, it's all as one piece. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to roll this, I'm going to actually press it out with my knuckles. Okay. Not press it too thin. It's probably thin enough. Don't worry about your cracks and that around the edge. That's what makes a scone a scone. Then I'm going to take my cutter and I'm going to cut as many scones out of this as I could get. Now my scone is probably between half and three quarters of an inch. Don't roll it any thinner than that because if you roll it any thinner than that, you're going to end up with biscuits. Not that the biscuits will taste bad like, but they won't for scones. Okay? Now, out of that I got one, two, three, four, five scones and a piece of dough left. Usually this is the dough I give to the kids. If you want, you could re-roll it gently. Not re-roll it, remix it gently. Give it a wee press again and cut some more out of it. And then we get another two. So that's one. Can you see that? There we go. And one is two. Okay. No, not bother with that. The oftener you roll this dough out, the more hard and brittle it gets. So it's better not rolled out too often. What I'm going to do now is I've got a baking tray that's been floured. Again with the same flour. And I'm just going to pop the scones on the baking tray. Now, that's your scones on the baking tray. What I'm going to do with them next is I'm going to take some swish steak. And I'm just going to paint them on the top. It gives the scones a nice look. I found that if I use milk, it can be quite dull looking. Um, it doesn't give them the shine that uh, the swish day gives them. So I'm just painting all the scones on the top. Now what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to put them in a preheated oven. 180 for 12 minutes roughly. Just keep an eye on them. You really want them in there till they're golden brown. And what I'll do is when they're ready, I'll take them out and let you see what the scones look like. Okay, thank you. Well folks, this is me taking the scones out of the oven. They're still hot, they smell delicious. And as you can see, they've risen well. Delicious with a wee bit of jam or cream or whatever you want to put on them. Okay. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you try them for yourself. Let me know how you got on.